I'm Brad Parsons, and today we're going to be talking about the reverse total shoulder replacement with an augmented modular glenoid system base plate from Arthrex. We'd like to thank the American Children and Elbow Society for allowing us to do this, and I want to introduce our surgeon, Dr. Albert Lin, who's Associate Chief of Sports Medicine and Associate Professor at the University of Pittsburgh. And so, Albert, thanks for doing this with us today. Uh, why don't we go ahead and have you present your patient, and we'll, we'll get rolling. Great, thanks for having me. Uh, so this is a 61 year old gentleman who's had chronic pain for several years. Uh, he had a prior open rotator cuff repair more than 12 years ago, uh, a lot of dysfunction. He's a large individual uh, with pseudoparalysis um, and he has uh, major lag signs as, uh, as seen below. So um, this is his preoperative imaging. He has clear findings on his x-rays of cuff arthropathy. Uh, you can see the anterior subluxation of his humeral head consistent with his subscap insufficiency. Uh, and the MRI basically shows a three tendon irreparable tear with associated fat infiltration findings. So given the amount of dysfunction and pseudoparalysis, um, our plan was to proceed forward with a reverse replacement um, and uh, a CT scan was obtained uh, to allow us to use a VIP pre-op planning uh, program. Yeah, I'd see, I mean, you had the MRI, do you need the CT? Do you get that routinely now to allow for VIP or how do you, how do you figure that out? Yeah, I routinely get CT scans on all my patients. Um, uh, the, uh, the plan is so accurate and also allows uh, certain, uh, in certain cases like this, we're not sure um, where it looks like there isn't a lot of deficiency. Um, it'll show you, uh, in, in this case, a significant superior inclination um, deficiency. So superior deficiency in this, in this uh, gentleman. All right, let's, let's get to it. Why don't you go through your VIP plan? Let's see how you plan this. So his inclination was 12 degrees in this case, which was a lot more than I anticipated on the x-rays. Um, and he's a young individual, so we want to try to preserve his bone stock. We're basically going through the VIP plan here with the augmented uh, system here, and you can see uh, that you can determine um, how much bone you need to ream um, and the seating. This is uh, toggling uh, through into the coronal view here. We can see that the augment um, nicely uh, accommodates his deficiency, uh, and so you can really um, preserve uh, bone. And again, he's 61, so he's a, he's a pretty young individual. Here, what we're looking at um, is um, we're going to determine the size of the, the, the post that we're going to use. Um, he's, uh, you can tell that he has a very, very long vault, um, and we're using a pretty lateralized system just by nature of the augment as well. So I'm trying to get bicortical fixation in him. Uh, so we're using the longest size uh, uh, post here, which is a 40, size 40. Uh, and you can see the line um, drawn there, which is basically where your guide pin is, um, uh, that's going to be set. Uh, by the targeted guide system so you can get this exactly the way you want to accommodate deficiency. Uh, this option here is, uh, is extremely nice to, to anticipate the length of the screws um, uh, that you're going to put uh, uh, into the base plate um, to try to get some bicortical fixation as well on your peripheral screws. Um, and this uh, uh, gives you a, a good prediction of what you encounter uh, intraoperatively. Um, and then what we're looking at here is the max amount of offset, uh, uh, gap offset. So this essentially allows you to determine how much you're going to make up um, with the base plate uh, in terms of the amount of frame. Okay, great. So it looks like you're doing a delta pectoral approach here. Boy, he doesn't really have any rotator cuff left, huh? Not surprising given the MRI you showed. He's pretty deficient here. Um, uh, his subs gap uh, is pretty deficient, so we just tag whatever we can and clean the capsule. Uh, we've got the humeral exposure here, um, and I like to do a, just a uh, freehand cut uh, right at the anatomic neck. Right. And you do that at 135, 155, or what's your, your, what's your choice here? My choice is a 135. I, I think it uh, matches the anatomy um, a, a lot better. Um, uh, and so, uh, I do this freehand. Now you you can use an intramedullary, extramedullary um, guide to to also preset uh, or pre cut one thirty five, one fifty five. Um, but in most instances, I will try for a one thirty five. So it looks like we're getting towards the glenoid. So uh, this system, I think, as a target. Why don't you describe how this works and and how you're going to instrument this uh, glenoid? So this is the VIP targeting uh, device. Basically, it has removable uh, phalanges here. Um, five of these which are reusable um, and this is set based on where you want to put your guide pin for your vip plan and it's an extremely accurate uh, guide um, and this again is adjusted uh, to accommodate the patient's anatomy uh, and where you want to put the base plane you can see here my scrub tech Alyssa has put this together on the back table even before we started the case 
Oh, look at that Glenoid exposure. Man, that, is, that looks great. Dude. That's impressive. <laughs> Big guy. Yeah, well, probably even better than exposure is this guide. It's so low profile. And so the um, uh, even in, in big, tight individuals, uh, this 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 uh, targeted guide allows you to place it in the exact position that you want. Uh, and uh, when it's on, it's solid. Um, it's extremely solid. Uh, and, it, it, and it's exactly where you put the VIP plan. We set this. So we have a flexible uh, guide pin, which allows ease of putting instruments uh, in and out. Here, um, we're using um, a, uh, a guide uh, to look at the maximal offset. Uh, and so um, this for me is to double check my VIP plan. And we basically put the hashes with the bovi where we want to um, position our, our reamer. Now, if you don't have a guide or potentially there's an osteophyte that was removed and the guide doesn't fit as well as you anticipated, you can still use this um, to determine where the maximal offset is to put the wedge. So it's like a backup to make sure your deformity is what you thought it was and where you're going to ream is exactly in the right clock face orientation. Exactly. And so now it looks like you're about to ream. And so, you know, I know this reaming system is really, um, it's a nice system. So why don't you describe it as you're going through this step? This reamer is uh, is really useful. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's very low profile. So it allows you to get into tight spaces and it's reamed at an angle, basically a wedge to accommodate the uh, bone deficiency in the base plate. My right hand is uh, stabilizing this so that when I ream, I can maintain the position uh, that I want uh, to maintain the clock face where we want to put the um, uh, the uh, the augment. Yeah, that looks great. So that that fits in there easy. Again, I mean, I think it's because you got such good exposure. I got to come down to Pittsburgh and have you teach me how to do that. But uh, it looks like it fits in easily over the pin, and you're not really taking any bone away from where you want. And so now it looks like you're checking again with another template or guide to make sure your augments oriented the way you want. Exactly. Um, this guy just allows me to check and make sure that uh, it's shaped in the same way as a base plate, just to make sure that it'll accommodate the base plate in the in the way we reamed. All right. So, and and now it looks like you're checking the length of your central post, which we know from your plan was going to be forty. Yep. And the VIP plan is, you know, again pretty accurate in allowing me to do that. And so you can see this uh, long um, drill bit for the central post. Um, and we're going to go bicortical with this, as you see here. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I've gone bicortical for uh, almost all indications, uh, especially if I'm using, using an augment or I'm lateralizing the center of rotation. I think that's important. So, uh, you know, the inserter here looks looks nice. It's it's it really, really easy to work with. And go ahead and you know, take us through what you're doing here. Absolutely. So, again, because we've marked with our checker the place of maximal offset, which is superior, and also lined up our uh, a reference point anteriorly, we basically just impact this in, lined up with uh, how we how we reamed. Um, and that's again, just a double check uh, to make sure that this is going exactly the way you want to get, want it to go in. This patient has excellent bone, so the compressive bite on this was, uh, was excellent. Nice. And so I think you said on your VIP plan, you chose two millimeters of offset through the, through the base plate. You know, talk to us a little bit about how you determine the amount of offset you want to provide in the system because the system has a lot of flexibility zero plus two soon plus four and then you got your glenosphere centered plus four so you can go up to eight millimeters so right. take me through your algorithm yeah i mean I'm, I'm basically looking at trying to match up where his joint line is and so in these systems where there's just automatically a little bit of lateralization because of the augment um, i don't feel like i need to over lateralize this very much because it's already doing this it's already kind of matching his anatomy i like a little bit of lateralization um, in individuals i like to get about plus six but here i already know that we have some lateralization because the base plate is augmented so we opted for a plus two and because we had the, the lateralization through the base plate, I just use a, a neutral glenosphere. Um, uh, without this system, if you're reaming sort of with a regular base plate with no augment, um, then I would uh, likely be lateralizing on both sides, uh, you know, plus two, uh, and likely with a plus four for the glenosphere. Um, but here, I didn't feel the need to do that. So it looks like you're putting all four screws in, uh, you know, with the VIP, I already kind of knew what the length was. So that makes it easy for your tech. They're sort of ready to go your reps got the right screws in the room and and now what are you doing yeah. here it looks like you're taking away peripheral bone yep so this is taking a peripheral bone just to make sure that there's nothing that will hang up the glenosphere this tool is actually useful just allow me as a double check to make sure i like the size of the glenosphere too and so this is the glenosphere handle here so uh, talk to us about how you go ahead and reduce that 
sometimes in these large individuals, um, you can't have all the attract retractors in. So we're just using a bone hook to, uh, to just retract the humor, humerus out of the way. And the, the inserter for this clinosphere is excellent. It's threaded in. So you can actually, um, do quite a, uh, if it's a tight space, uh, it allows you to kind of get in there without worrying, uh, that the clinosphere is going to disengage. Um, and now we're impacting it in. Um, and the nice thing about this system too, is that the Morse taper, when it's engaged, the central screw will lock uh, into this mechanism. I think we've all been in cases where we think the glenosphere is on and it's really not, and, the glen and, and that central screw will not go in if it's not engaged. Yeah, that's the worst when you get your post-op x-ray and the glenosphere is a little bit off the Morse taper. It's that bad Terrible. feeling that you <laughs> All right, so it looks like you're, you're preparing the humerus now, and, and it looked like you were doing a short stem here, and so, you know, this system has some options. Why don't you describe them as we go through watching you machine the humerus? Yeah, sure. Short stem for good bone, um, just for, again, that bone preservation. Um, poorer bone, I'll use a longer stem. Um, uh, the fixation here was excellent. Uh, we're preparing his metaphysis for that inset um, or the inlay uh, humeral system. And, you know, there are there's a central, uh, you can read that centrally, um, posterior officer, anterior officer, just to accommodate anatomy, because, again, everyone's a little different. Um, here we've uh, reduced uh, with a plus three uh, poly. Um, he has excellent range of motion, as you can see. So, you know, you're going to, it looks like you're getting ready to repair the subscap. I, I, I agree with you. If the subscap is healthy, I, I will repair it. You know, that bone looks a little soft. and Sometimes we encounter that. Is there ways to augment your subscap repair with this system? Yeah. So the, the nice thing about that suture cup is that there are holes in there that you can put sutures through uh, if you if you need it. Um, it's excellent for fracture cases um, for that reason. Um, uh, but yeah, if the bone's too soft, they'll allow a particular augment to make sure it doesn't cut through the bone. That looks great. So so you're going just you're cinching down and then, you know, when you look to determine your final construct with your polyethylene link, talk just about how you assess stability with a 135 and lateral offset to the glenosphere system. Yeah, so um, with a 135, um, you get kind of like that nice suction cup seal effect. And so what I do um, is I put my hand underneath the armpit and I shuck it laterally. Um, and if, uh, if I shuck it very lightly and it stays dislocated, it's too loose. Um, but if I shuck it um, and it kind of sucks itself back in, um, then I'm pretty comfortable with that. And, and, and as I've gone through practice, uh, I've, I've kind of noticed that I've gone a little bit looser um, for the range of motion purposes. Um, and again, if it sucks right back in, I'm comfortable with that stability. Yeah, no, that, that, that's exactly how I do it as well. And it was probably the big learning curve for me changing from Cremant to 135 and the mode of instability. Well, you know, that was a, a awesome video. You made a surgery in a big guy look very easy. I'm a little jealous. I'm feeling a little bit uh, inept. So uh, I think I got to come down to Pittsburgh and learn some tricks, tip and tricks, because that was a pretty seamless dude. So, all right, let's see the final product here. That looks perfect. So, you know, one of the things I look for, Albert, I want to see that lateral offset, the tuberosity, a lot of the acromion. I don't want to see a lot of length, which you've, uh, you know, really established nicely. There's not too much length to the system. You've got inferior tilt to your base plate because your augment, I mean, that looks like a home run to me. Anything that you would be unhappy about? No, I mean, I, I think with these systems, you, you, you know, your x-rays look like what you planned. I mean, you, you know, you, you go through all this trouble to pre-op plan to make sure that you want it exactly where you want. And, um, you know, with the targeter, it gives you exactly where you want to position this. Um, and I think, um, you know, x-rays, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing as I've done in practice how, how much more satisfying the x-rays are once you do um, the pre-op planning, because really it's just a matter of execution um, uh, during the time of surgery. Well, Albert, that was great, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope this was enjoyable for everybody. We wanted to uh, thank the ASCS again for allowing us to do this. And uh, like I said, I got to book a time to come down and visit so you can show me some, some, some new tricks. I need some new tools in my tool belt. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.